Okay. Uh, welcome back. Uh, so, as promised, today's lecture will be a tutorial. That is, we're going to have a couple of uh, uh, worked out uh, exercises uh, uh, with uh, value iteration. And uh, uh, so, today's lecture will be uh, held by Emanuele Panizon. Uh, you can see him here. He's a postdoc in our group and uh, recently has been working on uh, reinforcement learning uh, for active meta. And uh, since he joined uh, our group, now he works on uh, problems connected with biological behavior and reinforcement learning. So um, I leave the floor to Emanuele. Uh, this lecture will be recorded as usual. And, uh, and then uh, uh, I, I just created a channel on Slack uh, where you can find the notebooks uh, that we will be using uh, during this tutorials. Okay, so please don't worry. Okay, thank you. So let me share the screen. Um, so as Antonio said, my name is Manuele. I'm a postdoc here. Um, I will be giving this uh, lecture more technical with uh, exercises. Um, this is my first time doing a fully virtual class. So please uh, also give feedback. And this is my mail, so we can use the Slack channel, but also if you want to ask, you can write to me, also comments or feedbacks and everything. Uh, so these classes, I will present, uh, we mostly present uh, some code and the theory connected to it um, on my screen. So I will share just the already written code. Um, and then the code I will make available for you afterwards, uh, either on GitHub or in Slack or anywhere, it, it will get to you. Um, so today, as uh, Antonio said, it will be dealing with uh, solving uh, MDPs with dynamic programming. The first part of the election, we will deal with a traveling salesman problem. We will see how it can be rewritten as a macro decision problem and how it can be solved in this framework. Uh, then the second half, we will deal with uh, another different environment, in particular the grid world. And again, we will see how to define the environment as a macro decision process. And then we will use this very general uh, uh, method of value iteration. To, to solve it. So it will be a very general method on a particular environment. And we will see several things that we have seen theoretical. So the finite time horizon, the effect of deterministic or random moves, how it, it uh, can change the solution of, of the same problem. Um, OK, I only see black. OK, no, some faces. OK, so I will go on. If you have any question at any, at any moment, please shout because I will uh, not have a complete control of the uh, razor hands or something. Just shout and I will know. Good. Uh, so let's begin with a thriving salesman problem. So this has been a, a very much studied problem. It's a quite old one. I was reading the uh, first instances of this was 19th century, then it was mathematically rewritten in uh, half of the 20th century, but essentially this is a, like a benchmark uh, problem. So this is a very hard problem which has been solved exactly, and this is why usually it's one of the first uh, we deal with um, to, to show some things that are more general. What is the problem? The problem is, as you perhaps know, you have n cities which are all connected to each other, and you want to go through all of them, but only once. And also you want to go all of, to all of them uh, in the shortest uh, path, uh, way possible. And since this poor uh, salesman wants to go home, at the end of the day, he, at the end, he wants to be in the same city as before. So that you start from one, you go through all of the, all the other cities, only once, and then you go back. And you want to do it in the shortest time possible. What is, uh, let's say, the complexity of the general idea? So if I am very, very uh, lazy, I can try to do the brute force solution. 
which is that okay i know that there are just that many ways i can i can try i will just write all of them and i will just calculate the the, the path for all of them and i will choose the minimum Essentially, uh, this is a great idea for a very small number of, of cities, but it's, it gets incredibly complex. Uh, so this is a possible uh, situation. I have four cities, so I start in the first one. I want at the end I want to go back to the first one. At, at the beginning, I can choose three ways to go. Then I will have two ways to go because I will have two uh, remaining cities, then only one. So that is the first question which I can ask is it should be rather uh, immediate to see that this allows also um, a very simple computation how many states how many ways uh, how many paths there are um, so if you think about it, it we started with n cities but one is taken is the first one then i can go in n minus one then i have n minus two possibilities for the second one then i have n minus three Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So it's just n minus one factorial, which, as we know, uh, when n goes large, becomes uh, n to n approximately. Uh, so this is explode. This is a solution which it can be done, but it requires truly brute force, and it's not that intelligent. So we want to to put this uh, this this test with the dynamical programming approach. So now we want to rewrite the problem from the simple problem we stated so far into a, pro a problem which can be uh, read as a mark of decision process. Just a very, very, very basic recall of what it means. It's just that we need a set of states, uh, a set of states in which we can do a set of actions. So for each state, I can do an action and I, I, this produces uh, the resulting new state and, and a reward. But the, the fact is that the states must be such that uh, they need to, uh, the pair state action must be, be must have a Markovian pro um, property, which means it only need, you only need to know where, what is the state, what is the action to know everything what happens next. You must not need the history before the state. And this leads to something which is rather strange. So we have a problem which is just cities, and you go through cities, but actually uh, the state is not only the city you are currently in. You can think that, like the most basic thing is like, okay, the state is where you are, and the action is where you want to go. But this actually fails completely. And what is the minimal uh, representation instead is that the state. So the mark the decision process state is the city you are currently in, which is now the K, and the set of all city that needs to be visited afterwards. Uh, and this is the state. So the state needs to contain both information, where you are and what you need to do afterwards. Uh, so a basic question can be, uh, why is a representation with the state only with the current city not enough? You can think about it. I'm not sure if uh, you already know the answer, but you can think about it in this in this sense. So, to be enough, it means that if if you know the state, you know everything else which you can do afterwards. But if you only know the current city and you don't know uh, what cities you can go through you cannot determine the true dynamics because if I am in a current city but I've already visited another city, I cannot go there. And if I not visited, I can go there. So knowing only the current city is not sufficient for the dynamics to be Markovian because I, I, then I would have, I, I say, okay, I'm in a current city, I want to go to city three, and then I, I should know my history and this is not Markovian. So, but now, if you uh, state con uh, contains both the current city and all the cities you still need to visit, this can be written as a Markovian uh, dynamic. And indeed, it's quite simple to understand that if you are in a current city with a lot of city to visit and you do an action, which is basically the new city you're visiting, the new state will be as the first element is the city you're visiting because it becomes the current visit, uh, the current city. And all the city 
to visit yet are the same as before minus the one I've visited. So instead of having a, a kind of a enumeration of paths as before, we have an enumeration of, of paths as shown here. So I begin at, at single state, which is not only one as it was before, but it's one and then the set two, three, four, which means what I, need, I still need to visit. Then I, I can still do only three action. I can go in two, I can go in three, and go in going four. But then if I am in two, I must keep in the state the information that I still need to go in three, four. If I go in three, I still need to go in two, four, and et cetera, and et cetera. So now it's in this uh, set of states which I need to move. Okay, and in this way, the state is written. It's actually simple because not only I have the current state I am in, but I am also recording in the state the set of action I can take. Um, and you can see, for example, that for four, you have. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm. If you see my pointer, I hope so. Otherwise, screen. Um, this is state four, this is state four, this is state four, and I have three, two, three completely different states because it. It's very important to know what, what can I do afterward. Okay, so uh, again, how much memory this requires, because if we found a more intelligent way, which is actually worse, it's not a, a more intelligent way. Um, this can be solved exactly. And if you want, you can do uh, some combinatorial, combinatorial uh, math to try to guess to, to say how many states you have. But there is a very simple argument uh, which gives you more or less the number of states. So as you see, all the states here have a list of, of cities to visit. Uh, so of course, at the beginning, you have n minus one states yet to visit. And then all the states will have either a city which is visited or not visited. So if you think of all the cities as, as bits, then you can have two possibilities for each state. Uh, so you have for, for the different states to visit, you have two, and two to the n minus one. So for each city, either you have visited or not. And these are for sure different states. Uh, but then you can, you, can, you can clearly see that, for, for example, uh, I can still visit, I can still have to visit four, but I may have visited two or three. So it's more where two to the n minus one, uh, but but then it's also simple to see that it should be less than n times that. So it scales approximately two to the n, so an exponential uh, number of states, but it's much better than n to the n. So uh, this is for sure that. Okay. Uh, so now we have defined the problem as the Markov uh, decision process, which is the most tricky thing to do. Now we want to solve it. Um, okay. By the way, we have, we have claimed that the state one is special because it's the starting one. Uh, just to think about it, is this truly special? Uh, if you think about it for 10 seconds, you can realize that no, because it's a cycle. So if you do a cycle and you start anywhere in the cycle, it's, it's exactly the same. The poor travelers man wants to sleep somewhere by night, so uh, we have a special state. Okay, then again, we have changed the state to be the current city to be something which has more information than the current city. So one should also say, okay, if I compute an optimal path in the states, am I able to do a co an optimal path in the cities? Fortunately, yes, because each state contains the current city and some more information. So if I have a, an optimal path in the states, I can just discard the, the remaining information and I have an optimal path in the current city, which is the, the optimal path I'm looking for. Okay, basically, now uh, this is just a translation of the problem. Now uh, something enters inside, which is the, um, the true reinforcement learning, uh, let's say, framework, which is, which is that I assign a cost function to each state. And this cost function 
which is a sort of, of uh, evil value function, is the accumulated cost from that state to the end of a state, uh, to the end of a task following some policy. Uh, so I am in a state, I will follow from now on a policy. What is the cost which, so in our case, the distance which I will uh, accumulate from that state until the end of a state. Uh, clearly, uh, this, there, there is the, the typical, and you can see that this is a, a standard uh, reinforcement learning thing. The value of a state is the value of all the future rewards starting from the state following some policy. Now it's the cost, it's a, a, the sum of all the distances accumulated at the up to the end following some policy. It's, the, it's, the, it's a perfect uh, equivalent, um, which is, this is the, the, the recursive equation for the cost, the cost of being in a state, which you remember it's current city actions. It's the sum of all the actions. So, so all the new uh, cities you can go by the probability of taking them by the policy, the distance which connects the two cities, and then the cost from there onwards. And of course, we have a, a, a Bellman equation for optimal cost. We said that the optimal cost to be in a state so current city and the city to visit, just the distance between from, it's the minimum of, of the sum, that the distance for the next city and the optimal distance from that city to the end. Now, uh, of course, if you have no city uh, else to visit, the optimal cost is the only cost you can get and it's the only thing you can do, which is go back to your home. So this is very important because I have a boundary condition which says, okay, in this set of states, which are only like the, you are in a city and you are done, you have the optimal cost, which is just the cost of going back home. Um, because the only choice is go back to the origin. How to compute the cost? Now, it's very helpful that you have a boundary condition because now you have the perfect cost uh, when you have zero city to visit. So let's say, let's take all the, the, the states which have only one city yet to visit, then the optimal cost, you can calculate it from here, is just the minimum of, of the cities you can go, which is basically one, the distance to go there and the distance from there going on. But then you can go one step below iteratively and you have the, all the states with two cities to visit, and then you can you will have a minimum between two different city of doing the first city, and then you have the optimal cost there, or the second city and the optimal cost there. So since you you at each step you have the optimal cost for all the states with zero city to, yet to visit, one city yet to visit, two city yet to visit, you can propagate the 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 exact value of the optimal cost. Um, step by step. If you have any questions, any moment is good to yell. Uh, do me. Okay, we will see uh, how to implement it, of course, uh, in the code. Uh, when we have solved the optimal cost for all these steps, then it's also uh, very easy um, to calculate the optimal path because essentially you already been calculated the optimal path because at each point you have a, a, you have a minimum uh, between different actions and that action there is the optimal path if you had only that subset of states. And when you go back, 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 back to the origin, that let's say path, which is the path connecting all the optimal uh, costs from, from zero is the optimal path. So you can recreate it just by storing information you already computed in the way. Okay, let's go to the numerical solution if you do not have questions. Um, this is the, a, a bit technical, but it's what, what we are here for. Essentially, as it often is the case, uh, there are, it, it's a good also, it's a good practice. Uh, there will be several components of the algorithm, some which just compute the states, just some which just compute uh, the values, and so it's, it's, it's a bit modular. 
this code has been written partially also not by me but in general all the code you will see it's not written to be efficient it's written to be readable so most of the time it's not efficient and not readable so again yell whenever you want um but so i will try to be as explicit as, as i can not using any any fancy thing of python good uh first thing we need to create all the states uh, and you can you can go through this. So this is the first function. Um, you will see that it's a bit convoluted, but the idea is uh, as I create the states going forward, uh, I will then go back to create the optimal code. Essentially, I create a list of states which contains uh, only the first state, which is the one in which I am in, in city zero. Unfortunately, now all the city is zero, one, two, three, uh, and minus one, and contains a couple, uh, which is uh, the city I'm in, and all the city I have yet to, to visit, which at the beginning, it's all the city. For example, if n city is equal four, this, uh, this variable now would be a list of, of just this uh, state here, zero, one, two, three. Then I want to populate all the states starting from how many cities I've already visited. So at the beginning, I will say, okay, now let's populate all the states with one city visited. Um, so I will do this cycle here. Essentially, I take states minus one is just the list of all the previous layer of states, uh, which contains, you remember, the current city and all the city yet left to, to visit. I will take the list of the cities yet to visit and I will do a, a cycle over the cities which are contained in my in, in the part with, with the state of the city left to visit. For example, if I have four cities, now I'm, I have the list of zero, one, two, three. I take state minus one, which is just the only state I have with zero visited city, which is zero, one, two, three. One, two, three are my cities which I want to visit. So I will do a cycle uh, over one, two, three. Now, my new set of cities to visit is just the set which I, I had. So the cities I had to visit minus the city I have just visited. And the new state is essentially um, the city I've, I've just visited and all the cities I had to visit minus the city I have just visited. Okay, so for example, following this, I, have, I had 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3. I had 1, 2, 3 to visit. At the beginning, for example, I will visit 1 and I will create the state 1, 2, 3. And I will do it over and over, over all the number of cities uh, I visited. So at the beginning, I, have, I will have visit 1, then I have visit 2, and I have visit 3, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And this is just a check since there are multiple ways to go to visit uh, some states. Uh, you, you want to save only the new states you've created, not all the copies. So this is just a check on duplicate. So this is uh, actually a bit boring, but it, you will realize that most of the time the implementation of, of uh, reinforcement learning things with, with strange states is just a, a bit of technicality is there. And then the part of algorithm will be, generally speaking, uh, much faster. Uh, now we want to define the distances and the distances is very simple. Uh, we just create a random matrix with all uh, with n cities and cities and all the entries will have, will be just random distances between the two cities. Um, the diagonal is zero because uh, if you are in a city and you want to stay in the city, it's zero. But actually, you will never uh, even use it because there is no action which uh, keeps you there. Uh, so this is it. And I, as you can see, this is what the code does. For example, if I have four cities, I will have state visited, zero visited city. Then from this, we get one visited city, and etc. etc. And you see that with n it becomes large so it's exponentially exploding but it's still less than uh, factorially exploding okay so now you can see that 
essentially to solve the traveling salesman problem, you need as few lines as to create the state. And this is only because I try to put as many comments as possible. What I want to give to the solver is just uh, the essence of the problem, so the, the matrix distances, and then I will let it solve. So what it does is, okay, given a matrix, uh, this is, I know how many cities I have, I will keep, I will create dictionaries to keep all the information I want to create. I will just create the, the, all the list of the states. And then I am just, uh, remember that the first thing which, which we knew is that we know the optimal cost for all the states with no city yet to visit because it's just the distance going home. And this is exactly what we do now. We do now. For all the states which have no cities yet to visit, the cost is directly the distance between that state and, uh, and uh, the origin. And the also the best path, so the cities, the best city to visit if you do not have a choice is exactly to go back. Okay, as we, we, we explained before, what you have to do is just that you want to go back from the boundary, so from this, you have no cities yet to visit, then you want to go from, you have one city yet to visit, when you solve that, you want to go to all the states with two cities to visit and go on. And this is what we do. So we have, we will cycle, uh, but in an inverse order. So we start from, we have one city to visit, and then we go back. For all the states, which are all the states with a number of visited uh, cities to visit, the cost uh, the cost now what we want to do we want to do if you recall uh, the minimum between all the possible actions and this is exactly what we do okay we keep a list of what we keep a list of this the cost is we we select a new state so okay i am in a state where i can go this is a i create all the new states and then i say okay the, the, the cost which I have to mean over is if I go to this next state, it costs the distance to there plus the optimal cost, which I already uh, calculated from there onward. So for all the cities I have yet to visit, I will calculate the cost of going in that city plus the optimal cost from there onward. And then I will have in this list here, I will have all the different possible choices, all the cities I have to visit. And in there, I will have the cost to go there and the cost onward, the cost to go there, the cost onward. And then I just take the minimum. Taking the minimum, I have the optimal cost uh, for that state. Also taking the minimum, I can understand where is the minimum and this gives me uh, which, which is the best action to do, so which is the, the cities to go uh, to minimize, okay? Then, since we've done this for, for all the steps, starting from the, you can see this as, as a zero step, I do not have anything to visit, I will go back, then this will do it for the, I have one city to visit, and I do all, the, all my trials, I, I get all the minimum, I get two visits, Two cities and okay, you can understand. I will have um, kept in store all the best actions to do, which are all the best cities to visit if I were in the state. Okay, now I put myself in the start, and now I can just uh, add uh, to my position what is the best action I knew. I, I should have, I should do in the, in the state. And I do it until I go back to the state, which is uh, the origin. Since I've already stored the cost, optimal cost for all um, cities of all states, I can do this forward motion, which I, okay, I'm in this state, what is the best action this? What is this best action this? And et cetera, et cetera. Basically, this is everything you need to solve it. So let's take 
you can see that this uh, doesn't work because for some reason I am a fool. Mm -hmm. You didn't run the cell for importing NumPy. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yes. Which I this is like ninety five percent of my my errors will be this. Um, okay, so we we have this uh, this type of matrix. You can see which is we chose it to be symmetrical uh, in the creation. We have a diagonal with zero, um, and then okay, we can solve it. And we see that for a couple of reasons, this is extremely uh, costly. The two reasons are, first of all, of, of, of everything, this is still an exponentially uh, uh, costly algorithm. And the second reason is that this is like the worst way to use Python ever. But and these two things together make so that this uh, takes a, a, a certain number of seconds to finish it. But in the end, you have a best path. So, and you have also uh, the measure of the shortest path. So, why is it, uh, why can we use this algorithm? We can use this algorithm for two main reasons. The first is that, uh, as in all kind of uh, um, dynamic programming, we know everything about the model. We know. Uh, we, we, we have perfect information, uh, we know we, what is the transition, we know the reward, we know everything. And also in this particular case, we can use this with, with nice um, uh, trick because we have the information about uh, the boundary. Uh, so we, we know exact, the exact value at a certain point and we, co we have the tool to go step by step um, and calculate, we know that each step, we will calculate the optimal cost. So we have the optimal cost for, for when you have visited all the cities, and then we are sure that we can calculate the optimal cost for all the states with one city left to visit. And in this way, uh, it's rather uh, good because you need only to sweep the, the states once, because it's, you know that, when, when you have measured the optimal cost, you do not need to, to I mean, it's, it's not like you're doing multiple sweeps and every time you, you just update some values, but you can do it in just one sweep because you have a perfect order of, 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 thing, of, of things to do, you know? We, if you, if you see in the, in, the, in the algorithm, every S, every state, will be uh, considered only once. And when it's considered the optimal cost, it's, it's perfectly uh, calculated. Why am I saying this? Just because we will see in, in the next, in the next uh, uh, half of the lecture, when we do value iteration, this is not anymore the case. We will see that then uh, we will have something perhaps even simpler as an algorithm, more general, but then we will have to do multiple sweeps of all the states uh, to go, and we cannot, in principle, it, it, you cannot se select just a bunch of states, okay, do it this, then do it this, then do it this. It's, you have to do it all together. Okay, so do you have a question? I have a question. Yes, please. Um, is it ever possible that if you choose uh, um, in the first steps uh, an option that gives you a minimum cost, uh, then uh, afterwards you could uh, end up with a bigger cost uh, rather than if you choose uh, some bigger cost in the beginning uh, and uh, it would have give you a minimum cost after. I don't know if I explained myself well. Um, I, I think I, I understood. Um, in a sense, you never choose uh, an action which has a maximum. So, uh, okay, let's 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 solve it separately. Uh, no. <laughs> um, so, if you are in a state and you, and you calculate in from that state onwards, and you find which that, that your best action is is uh, to do one choice uh, instead of another, 
when you are below that state and you arrive at that state, it's, it will never be possible that that ch uh, choice there is wrong. Okay, so for example, let's, uh, um, let's say I am, um, let's say I'm in, in this, this uh, point, point here, four to three, okay? Uh, when I arrive to four to three, and I, I see that the optimal cost is to go to two three, mm -hmm. and then three zero, instead of going to three two, two zero, this, this fact here, will never become wrong as I go upward, okay? Because by definition, the, the cost of going to 2330 or, or, and uh, terminal state is perfectly computed and it's perfectly, uh, you can compare it perfectly with another number. So if you, at that point you say, okay, I will go to 22330 terminal state, then it will always be more convenient than going to 3220 terminal state. But it could be that when you are at this level, so you are at two, three, four, three to four, four to three, it seems that right now the, the four to three is the best way to go. But actually, the distance between one, two, three, four, and four to three is much larger than the other two. So even if at from this layer onwards, four to three has the best cost, so the minimum cost. If you go at higher level, the cost, so the optimal path goes through another state. Okay. Mm -hmm. I hope somewhere there yes. was an answer. Yes, 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 I understood. Thank you. Okay. I sorry, I think you can prove it uh, by um, absurd. Like uh, if you assume that uh, um, the cost, uh, you choose the minimum, but then the cost uh, might be greater, you, you reach an absurd and you can prove it. Uh. Yeah, I, I mean, in a, in a sense, yes, you define the cost as the minimum and, and everything is you, you perfectly know. So if it ends up that it was not the minimum, then it was not the minimum. So yes. Uh, but I mean, what I wanted to, why I was a bit shaky at the start is that if, if, if at a layer you have a cost and you think that one to go through that city is best, you, are, you have to wait for all the, the, to, to the path to arrive to the terminal state before choosing. This is what I wanted to say. From one, one state onwards, definitely. You, you have chosen the minimum path, it will always be the minimum path. May, may I comment with uh, more states? Uh. Sorry. I meant uh, with more states uh, because I was imagining uh, maybe a map where you have uh, several cities and they're all uh, maybe distant with different distances and you choose to go from uh, one city before to one city before because that's the closest maybe, but then uh, if you go on, uh, that wasn't the best choice. That's what I meant. Uh, well, if if Sorry, you if I, understand, if I understand well, but this is this. Uh, I mean, this is not the case because, uh, however, at every level you compute all the distance of all the state of this level, and so yes, that's what I understood that after he uh, explained. Yes. May, may I just add the uh, comment? So just to make the connection with what we did uh, uh, during our lectures. So uh, I, I'll try to, uh, to share the screen myself. I, I hope I can. Let me, let me stop. I don't know what, what kind of, if you're seeing, are you seeing my screen? Okay, so during the lecture, uh, in lecture study, when we derived the Bellman's equation for the fixed time horizon, okay, uh, you remember that we did exactly the same kind of argument. So we started from the end, okay, and then uh, we had to took uh, uh, an optimization over all the sequence of policies uh, from a certain time on, okay, and uh, uh, 
uh, and then we started from the, the final time in this procedure. So you first focus on optimizing or you, you pick uh, one time and then you optimize all, all the other ones. And then you end up with this recursion uh, optimality equation that is exactly the one that uh, uh, Emmanuel is, uh, is using. So uh, here, uh, the way that you prove optimality, the optimality equation, inherently uh, tells you that uh, uh, that's the only way to, to turn uh, with, with the optimal solution. So if you start from the end, you will never be wrong in getting backwards, okay? That's the, uh, just, just, so you realize that this abstract calculation is exactly what is happening here. So I'm gonna unshare my screen now. And if Emmanuel, you want to share it back. Uh, yes. So when, when you look at this diagram of the states and the transitions, uh, yeah. So here you're reasoning in terms of terminal state, but you can think in terms of times, okay? So this would be step time zero, then you have time one, and then you have time two, time three, and then the, time, the final time is exactly the number of cities that you have to visit, plus one if you wish, okay? So, this way of going backwards, you can think it in terms of going from the terminal states backwards to other states or going from the final time backwards. Okay, do you see the connection with what we had at the lecture? Thank you. Uh, okay, do I, can you, yes. Uh, I'm not sure if this is a good time to make a break. Or... Yeah, I think so. Maybe, maybe the only thing I want to add is just an historical remark. So this algorithm here applied to the uh, uh, to traveling salesman problem uh, goes under the name of uh, I'm going to write it in the chat. Uh, it's called as the, uh, the Bellman uh, car held algorithm. And uh, so, and as you, as you just uh, should realize, it's, it's just one specific example of uh, dynamic programming with a finite horizon uh, and with back, backward induction. But that's how historically was known as, uh, as a problem. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's good because it's exact, but it's also exponentially costly. So when the number of cities becomes very large, it basically becomes unfeasible. So in the literature of the traveling salesman problem, there's a lot of uh, heuristic algorithms uh, that are uh, guaranteed to find solutions which are nearly optimal, uh, according to, the, to some rule. Uh, but we don't discuss them here because uh, they have nothing to do with uh, reinforcement learning. It's more of a computational uh, issue in, it, uh, in itself. Okay, thank you, Manuel. So I think we, we can take a break now and uh, maybe uh, get back at uh, 10 sharp uh, for the second part. Okay, I will pause the recording now. So Thank you. please remind us afterwards. Resume the recording first. Okay, good. So now we go to the second part of, the, of the, this exercise lecture, which is grid work. Uh, okay, so now we will deal with a different environment, the grid world environment. And we will use uh, value iteration uh, as, a, as a tool to, to solve. So the, uh, this is a very simple problem with very simple solution. Um, but I think that at least the, the argument is very general, it's very um, remarkable, I think, in its simplicity. Um, and we will see funny colored things, which is always good. So uh, the grid world environment can have many, many aspects. I chose just one, which is very simple. For sure, it's a, it's a grid, so it's a square cell works. Um, we, have, we want to, to find the optimal path towards, uh, we want to maximize the reward. The reward uh, uh, will be uh, some kind of uh, navigation um, based reward in the sense that 
whenever wherever we are, we want to arrive to some goal states. And these goal states uh, in this particular uh, implementation of the grid world are, are just terminal states, but whenever from a state you do, do, do an action and you arrive to these terminal states, you get a reward. And this reward, it will be some value R, uh, which uh, we will see positive, negative, whatever. Uh, in this particular implementation, the goals are terminal states. So whenever you arrive to a goal, then uh, essentially it's an absorbing state with a zero reward. Um, what can an agent do? Uh, it's rather simple. It just he can try to move up, down, left, and right. Uh, but there are two two exceptions to this uh, rule. The first one is that certain sites will be blocked. So it will be just, uh, I will put randomly some blocks and you can, if you try to move into a block, you stay still. And this, there is an overall uh, dimension of the world. If you try to go outside the world, uh, you just stay still again. Okay, so a typical world as uh, we, we can create as again, this is, we will have different parts for movement, definition of environment, and an uh, actual algorithm which solves the, the stuff. So um, the reward I will I will create assigning a couple of values. So I will create assigning a dimension in X, a dimension in Y, a number of randomly uh, chosen uh, blocks, a, a set of goals, states, and the reward these these states will give if you happen to arrive to that. Uh, Essentially, it, it just creates a, a matrix. So we, we will, it, the states now are simpler. It's just a matrix of positions. Uh, we will have randomly uh, chosen blocks. At maximum, they can be in blocks. They could even repeat, I, I, we don't care. And the word signals that this is a block just putting minus one in, the, in, in its construction. Essentially, we have a matrix which is over everywhere at zero somewhere it's minus one and then there, are, there is a list of position of uh, in which there is a reward which is neither zero ni neither minus one it's it's the reward it's a goal terminal state in which if you happen to go there you get a reward um you can see uh i create just uh, one with i say okay i want 10 10 by 15 i want 20, 10 blocks randomly put I want that in, in the last position, I want the reward one, and this is what basically what it creates. So it, this is a, um, a word, this is a goal one, and this is an uh, essentially whatever uh, I need of a word. So it's basically an array with some minus one and some one. So what, what it means to solve the grid word, it means that I want to know for each position uh, from each position, what is the optimal path uh, to get the maximum reward? Okay, so at the end of, the, of, of this experience, I want that every single square is mapped with uh, the best action uh, to do to, to maximize my future reward. And also, I, I, I will do it with value iteration. So in each, in each uh, square, I will have printed the, the, the number, which is the value, so the expected. Uh, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Good, 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 good. Um, how to solve this this word is we will do it by value iteration. Um, value iteration again is it's a part of, of, of as as was before of dynamic programming in the sense that we know the model, we know we know everything there is to know. Uh, the 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 problem is to solve it and not to to try to uh, to grasp the information from what we do. We know everything, we just want to solve it. Um, in, in this case, it will be, again, an iterative process, but it will be a, a, a bit different from what we had before. Um, as Antonio pointed out, before it was, it could be seen as a, as a, as a temporal sequence and you, you, you went by, um, by solving exactly all the steps from the last steps to, to the first step because the, the length was fixed and each times uh, 
pertain to different, completely different states. So the states at time t were different from the states at two. So it was, you could swap from uh, last time to the first time, and you could maximize, uh, you optimize this way. Now, since you you can also in times you you could like go back and go forth, uh, you essentially it will be a different process, but it will be in the same sense, and it will be um, as 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 using the same equation as before. Uh, essentially, we will use the same Bellman operator as before. Uh, before we could use it uh, knowing exactly what it, what it was the cost at later times or at later states. And we could bring this exact notion uh, iteratively backwards. Now we will use the Bellman operator over all the states and we will not have uh, the fact that this every single iteration will bring to the optimal exact uh, value but we will use that if you use the bellman operator in general over all the states what you have is that uh, this this uh, the value landscape of over all the states collapse to the correct one so essentially what I very poorly said is that we were going to use the property the, the Bellman operator it contracted. The algorithm, as you've seen, uh, I will just uh, reiterate a, a bit, you, we want to estimate the value for all the states. And we do it in this way. We, first, we, at, uh, we attribute to each state a random value. Uh, and then we, so, it's, but of course the value for the terminal state uh, is zero in the sense that this is an absorbent state with no reward. So this is a fixed zero. And then we do, as, as we sweep over all the states and we, if the new value for the state will be um, the maximum possible, uh, the maximum possible number which comes from uh, selecting uh, the best action from there and you have the so you will select an action you, you see here um, you will have the probability of being in different states uh, being in that uh, state with that action and you have a reward plus uh, the discount factor gamma the value from the new state onwards this is in general, this is a probability function. So let's say I have three actions. I will check for each free action. I will have a spreading of my positions. And this will give some rewards plus gamma, the, the value from that position onwards. I will choose the best action from the, from the list given by this, uh, this uh, sum here. And I will, my new value will be the, the maximum of this uh, list here. Excuse me. Yes. Uh, uh, why that probability depends on the rewards? Because, okay, I, I, I understand that depends on the state, the future state and the action, but why also? Okay, okay. Um, uh, as, you, as you can see, it does not, it's not exactly that depends on the, on the reward. Es essentially, let, let's, let's say uh, this, okay. Uh, you see that now in the summation I have an AR, I have an a reward, I have a proper reward, right? Oh yes. yes. Okay. So let's say I am in a state S, which is a position which is close to a, a goal state with reward reward one. Okay. And let's do I do the action of going there. Okay. So the probab you have to sum, you have to sum two terms. The probability of I was here, I did this action, I got reward one, and I'm in the terminal state, right? Okay. This probability is one, because if you are there, you move and you got one, you, it's exactly what you do. But then you have also another term, which is the probability of being there, moving to reward the, to the terminal state and not getting any reward. And this reward is zero, okay? It's a, it's a bit strange way to say that um, you, 
you sum over all the outcomes, you sum over all the, so you sum over all the new positions, all the, all the rewards you could have got. Normally speaking, half of these are zero. So the probability of doing an action uh, which gives no reward and giving a reward is zero. The probability of doing an action which gives one of a reward and not receiving a reward is, is zero. Do you see what I mean? Otherwise... So, so are you saying that the, I mean the the rewards is is the probability of getting rewards is not is not always is not always one. Even if I go to a cell in which the reward is expected, but uh, no, 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 can... exactly, exactly. Then, then it's one. Um, uh, may I may I yes. just weigh in uh, to make the connection with what we had at the lecture again? <clears throat> so I will go again with screen sharing. Uh, all right, so uh, you might remember that when we introduced the uh, Markov decision processes first, uh, we had introduced this transition probability that uh, from a given state, S, when you pick an action A, can you see the pointer, by the way? Yeah, 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 yeah I can. You jump into a new state as prime, and then you collect some random reward R. So in general, when you do one, one of these transitions, you receive some random reward, maybe stochastic. Okay. Uh, then uh, later on, we realize that when we uh, write down our objective function, since we average out, we can explicitly perform the average over the random rewards. You see, this is what is in this line here. Actually, what matters here is just that you can marginalize your transitions over the distribution of rewards, and you can focus only on the expected rewards given state, action, and new state. Okay. So from that point onwards, we only consider the average rewards given the triplet S A S prime. So what what I'm, what Emmanuel is writing is this slide is just. It, it starts from the more general setting, which includes the possibility of having stochastic rewards, even though they don't matter really here. Okay. 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 Is that, is that any clearer? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I see. And so the expected value is that what I. Yeah. In this case, there's no ambiguity because you get a reward which is always one. So there's no stochasticity, and the average is the value of the reward. Okay. 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 And so you can you can write both the first or the second. There, there is no difference. Okay. Exactly. Okay. okay. Thank you. Sure. Uh, okay, so sorry for uh, being slightly confusing. Um, okay, but essentially, you see that uh, this, this is just the fact that uh, I am in a state S, I, I evaluate all the action I can take. Uh, this action will lead to different states with their rewards. And, uh, and of course, I will, uh, I will, I will evaluate where I go, which reward I get, and, and uh, plus the, um, the gamma, the value of the new state. And then uh, this, this, I will have a list of, of, uh, of approximated uh, evaluated uh, values uh, for my, my different actions, and I will take the best one of, of them. And my new value from the state, it will be, um, it will be exactly that. I will assign to that value of uh, that number there. Now, the point is that this is a bit, uh, you can see that it's an approximate um, way of working because on the, on the right hand side, you have the values which were the last approximation of the value. So when you do the maximum over A over the sum of new states, the probability of being in that state and getting the reward, the reward plus gamma, the value of the new state, this new state is the approximate value. So whenever I do the new value and I assign to that new value, I'm, I'm actually losing, uh, I'm, I'm actually changing also the right side. So it's, it's, it, it, it does, it's not self-consistent and when it will reach the cell consistency, then it's, it's, um, it will be the proper optimal uh, value function. Okay. 
to measure this self-consistency. So how much does it change that I am applied the, the Bellman operator? So I'm doing the right hand side of this, this part uh, and I'm changing the value is, uh, is my error, tol uh, error, error value, which is the, the distance between uh, the dis difference of the previous value and the new value, which I've calculated using the Bellman operator over the old value. And I, since the Bellman operator is a contracting, I, will, I know that this, this uh, distance will, will, will get smaller and smaller in time. And essentially, uh, I, I, I can say, okay, I, I just need it to be as small as some small value I, I determine, which is uh, some uh, tolerance. And when you are there, when you have reached uh, tolerance, you assume this is the, this, this uh, value I've got after many iteration is the, is as close as I wanted to be to the optimal value. Then when you have the optimal value, uh, finding the policy is actually simple because again, if you are in a state, you just loop over all the, the possible action you wanted to do and you get the one which maximize uh, the sum of the, of the outcomes, reward plus gamma, the value in the new place, okay? So value iteration is essentially just having a random set of values for all the states before and applying the Bellman operator. So each state, I, I, I see what are my the actions I have available. I see what is the, the, the expected uh, future accumulated reward as in R plus the new value from there. I do the action which maximize this, uh, this expected future uh, accumulated reward, and I assign the value uh, to that one. And this I do iteratively over and over. Okay, good. And, and excuse me, excuse me, probably I, I'm one of the MHPC, so probably I, I didn't reach the point. I, I saw some, some videos, but probably not all. Uh, just something that maybe you, you already said or has, has been already said in the theory lectures, but. The fact that this algorithm is converging is a is a is, is a property. Is a, it's a property? Yes. Okay. Uh, I don't know if Antonio wants to to chip in, but I, I think from now you will see in, in the lecture we we use the property of a Bellman operator, uh, which is that it's contracting. So okay. I, can, I can just point you to the right uh, place in the in the lectures where I did that, so you can. Uh, uh, okay. Okay, because I, I started to see the, the drive and, and also the, the, the other, the YouTube yeah, sure. the lecture, but probably I, I didn't reach the point, but. Yeah, I, I, will, I will just, I mean, th I think it's useful for, for all students to, uh, to get to that point. Uh, yeah, so <clears throat> it's in lecture four. And uh, if you uh, can unshare, I, I uns yeah, sorry. Okay. okay. So uh, we we discussed this uh, 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 how to derive the Bellman's optimality equation, which is uh, here, and it's just uh, we start from uh, the definition of the value function as a recursion, and then uh, take the maxima over the policy. And this is the first part. And then the second part uh, shows that the Bellman operator is, is contracting, which means that if we take uh, uh, any two vectors uh, in the space of values and mm -hmm. apply separately the Bellman operator to each of them, then uh, the distance in a, in a specific mathematical term, it's the, uh, in the n infinity norm, mm -hmm. uh, is smaller than the the distance of the original points, which ah, is okay. Yes, uh, so a, a, contra is a contraction. Okay, yes. it's a contraction. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, uh, I, I was oh. just uh, okay. arrived to to lecture three, and so okay. Uh, ne never mind. I mean, it's okay if you ask questions. It's useful for us, uh, for everybody to revise on, on on the fly and see the connection with what we did uh, uh, during the lectures. No, no worries at all. Okay. So. Uh, okay, so um, operationally, what we have is it's a very simple thing in the sense that we just will have, we'll, we can construct 
it was something which does a single instance of uh, um, using the Bellman operator, and then we iteratively do it, okay? Because the, the, the approximation of the values uh, at a certain time is just, you take the approximation you already got, and you apply the, the Bellman operator. And apply the Bellman operator is just to, to, to try all the actions and find the one which maximize uh, the expected outcome afterwards. Okay, good. So let's um, translate the grid word as a, a mark of the decision process. It's actually even simpler than before because now the state is exactly what we would uh, imagine. So the state is just the position. So it, in this case, it's just two integers. So in the index of the position, the action state is the same as, as uh, uh, is the same in, in all positions. It is just the four uh, moves you can try, which is uh, up, down, left, right. Um, for now, we do the transition is deterministic. It means that uh, the probability of ending up in a state S prime, given if you are S and A, is either one or zero. If it's one, uh, it's, it's one if um, S prime is equal to, uh, to the position I was in and, and the move I did, it's zero uh, anywhere else. In a sense, okay, maybe this, this uh, the reward, uh, you can put the reward here and, and see that maybe it's, uh, it's confusing. So uh, the reward function is it's simple in the sense that if you reach a, a terminal state, which is a goal, the reward of doing the action ending up in, in the terminal state, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a value. All the other action have zero as, as a reward. Okay, this is the first vanilla grid word we, we work. Um, okay, so we want to implement this as a, as a function. Uh, now there is a bit of a caveat which uh, to, to be consistent with our understanding of up, down, um, the actions and, and the visual uh, plots, uh, there is a bit of, I mean, uh, one zero, it's, I mean, it's okay, up, down, believe it, everything is consistent, but sometimes up, it, it, if you read the ve vector which goes up, it's not uh, zero one. And it, so X, Y are a bit shifted in, in this world. Everything is consistent, I checked. Uh, so the actions, it's up, down, right, left, and it will be just vectors one zero, minus one zero, zero one, and zero minus one. Uh, X is not the first axis, unfortunately. The probability of transition is, is what I want. Now, uh, if you are in a state, this is want to return a list, uh, a list of states you, you're going to end up if you are in a state S and if you do an action A, given that the word uh, is, uh, is, is what it is. And essentially, uh, just try to move in the deterministic sense it just to try the new position and then it checks is this position outside of the world if it is outside of the world then you do not move or if it's new this new position it's a block so it's it's word value is minus one you do not move and then it just returns to very simple list one list says you are uh, which new position you have reached and in this particular case, it's only one. Uh, it's either the position you reached or the same position as what you, you were before if the action was not allowed. And the probability of doing it one because everything is deterministic so far. The reward is... is Sorry. Yes. Is there any reason why to enforce the fact that we need to stay within the box we didn't put a halo of points with minus one? No, 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 no. Uh, so all the... All the um, efficiency is, I mean, this code is, is, is one of the many code you can create. Okay. And I can assure you it's suboptimal in all possible ways. Okay. So this is just a, a one way I, I, I chose it to be. Okay. Um, the rewards again is uh, it's zero everywhere, but if you arrive to a terminal state, uh, good, you get the reward. Okay, so this is essentially all the meat of the, of the algorithm. So this is the value iteration. And uh, it's actually rather, um, rather simple, as you will say. So this 
part here is just define the, the, the word, the environment. You will have, you, you, you have been given a word, you've been given a set of values, you will return the new uh, iteration of values. You will be give, uh, you give uh, the gamma um, uh, discard factor, and this you can for now you can ignore in the sense that this uh, is just if you want to transition to be random. Uh, you you create um, initialize the new values, the new policy. Uh, you find where are the goal positions in the world, but we, and and then either the transition is deterministic or it's uh, it's random. This is just easy. What you do, which is slightly different in, as uh, in, in the traveling salesman, you cycle over all the states. So you take, you have the values, you have the old values for all the states, and you say, okay, let's sweep over all the states. I cycle over all positions, X and Y. My new state is defined as this. You see Y is X, X and Y, okay? Then, if the position is a block, I skip it because I'm, I'm not interested, but it cannot be an agent in a block. So it does not make any sense to have a value or a, or a, or a policy. But otherwise, I'm trying all actions. So A is one of all the list of actions. I, I see where I end up. Remember that right now this is deterministic, so it's just P is one, so I have probability one of finishing in one state. And then I want to record what is the, uh, the value of this action. So uh, for all the probability and, and states I'm ending up, I'm checking what is the reward to end up there. And then I'm doing what is the right side of that uh, equation before. So I'm multiplying by probability by the reward uh, plus the gamma of the values uh, in the new position. Okay, so in a sense, since I'm doing this for loop, I'm cycling, cycling over all possible new state, over all the probability of the new state. So this is exactly what it's written here. So sum over thing. And then I was I was doing this for all the actions. Uh, and I'm doing this. So if a new summation is, is better than the old one, the old one I, I kept in memory, then this is, uh, this is sign of, okay, you are the best uh, value, you are the best action, which is a bit uh, different from what you could do in general, because um, what happens now if I had two actions which were uh, perfectly identical, the answer is right now, since this is a, a, this is a strict major and strict uh, greater than, uh, then only the first is, is, uh, is selected. So I'm introducing a bias, which doesn't matter too much, but I'm introducing the bias of the first action you're checking in case of tie, it's the one which breaks the tie. A better way to solve it and a more correctly um, correct in general is to list all the action which are, will result in a tie and to store them and then eventually randomly choose one of the other. I do it here for simplicity, which I, if there, there is a tie, we see there is a lot of ties everywhere. I'm just taking the first action it, it tries, okay? Just to, to notice. Then I checked all the actions. For all the action, I check all the possible outcomes. I, I, I saw which is the best. My new value is that best action, my new policy is the best action which led to that value, okay? Then I, uh, my, my, I, I take and I remind myself that the goal state is a terminal state with value zero and you have, you, there is no policy uh, in that terminal state. Good, okay, any question about that? Okay, so example, I'm taking just one grid word with one goal. Good, okay. I'm just, you see, this is what, what I mean. This is a grid word I'm creating randomly some blocks. At the beginning, the values are zero everywhere because I have defined that to be zero, okay? This is just, I, I can do it. What happens if I do a first update? Okay, so 
I begin with setting the values to zero. The word is exactly as, as seen here. And I'm, I want also to estimate change. Okay, now you see also that I'm using a, a different L, L2 distance. It, this is not um, L infinite. In this particular case, it does not uh, change. The, the theory, the, the contraction property is demonstrated with L infinity. Uh, here I will use uh, for laziness the L2, but it's actually, if you do and p max and uh, p abs uh, of, of the two, it's exactly the same, okay? Uh, okay, so the one update is done here. So I'm giving the word, so description of the word, I'm giving the values which are initialized to zero and giving the gamma, and I, I am asking the new value, okay? So what happens? That is already the answer. Update, I have to define everything. I'm sorry, one day I will learn, but not today. Okay, good. So you see that the one update actually changed only four values here. And it changed uh, the four values around the goal. Why? This is actually very simple to see. Because uh, if you are in an, any other point, your for action would have led to with zero reward to a state with zero value. So you had zero before, then you can do whatever action you want, but you, uh, you will end always with a zero reward plus zero value. But if you are here in this four state, which are now become uh, powerful, I hope also your screen, um, you have seen that between all the four action, you actually have one action which goes into the goal, and in the value is one for the reward plus gamma, the value in the goal. The value in the goal is zero, so exactly one, okay? So it's one and you see, and you, what I was saying before about breaking the ties, you see that all other policy are looking uh, down, which does not mean anything. It just means that this is the first action that they looked, all the other are of course, perfectly equivalent. Okay, what happens? Yes. But even though, um, even though all the other actions basically are random because the reward is the same regardless of where we go, shouldn't we nevertheless respect the fact that we can't step into um, one of the black squares? So like for instance, there's a lot of tiles where there's a down arrow that leads right into a, a black sure. square. Okay. This is a definition of, um, this is the definition of, of a Markov, uh, um, process. You are allowed to take that action. That action leaves you on the spot, which is different than you, your, uh, your action set is smaller. Okay. If you are here, I hope you see my pointer. Yeah. You do not have one action. You have four action, three of which are completely useless, but they exist. You can take them and they leave you with probability one to stay on the same place. Okay. It seems like a stupid thing to say, but it actually it's, it's, it's not at all uh, the same. So uh, we will see afterwards that you, have, you can have negative uh, ending up uh, state. Okay. Let's say that here above it, I have a terminal state with value of a reward of minus 2000. Okay. You don't want to go there. You can avoid going there, just keep keeping on going uh, through this block. You will stay there, but it's the optimal policy. You see what I mean? Yeah, so um, so basically this constraint that we cannot step uh, into the black squares, it's not, uh, it's not enforced when we calculate the set of the next actions that we can take, but rather uh, when we calculate the probability of the next state, right? Yes. Okay. okay. And I mean, this is this is our, our convention. We we will live in, with it. You can create whatever grid word with your rules. This is what we have now. Sure. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for the question. So now we see what happens if you we go above it. So we again we we have the values. We initialize it to zero. We we set up a tolerance in this uh, L two norm, and then we say okay, let's try three hundred iterations uh, every time. I, I'm asking to, to, to apply once the Bellman operator, 
to the values given the word uh, and I will get the new values and the policy and I'm using gamma equals 0 0.95. Uh, this is just a side note for me. You can see now that the distance now I'm going from zero to one, I have a large distance between the state and then the, the distance between uh, state uh, K and K plus one is getting smaller and smaller. At the end, uh, it also gets to zero. We, we can discuss about that. And we, you see that now uh, it's not as, as before. Now we have selected a, a, a policy which is non-trivial. And now we see that the value actually goes, uh, it's, it's non-zero uh, everywhere and except for one place. And we can discuss about that. And, uh, and you see that there is a gradient of color and the policy is actually following that gradient towards the, uh, the best, uh, uh, the, the terminal state. Also, it's, you could also understand that what is the, you can follow the value uh, around. The value is simply, the value is in a state is just done by the, the action. So a reward, which is zero, and then it's gamma the state in the next one. But the, the gamma, a value in the next state, it, it's again zero, the reward plus the gamma, the value in the next state. And this ends up always except for the last step in which you, you go. So this is one, because you end up in a terminal state, but you have a reward one. This is gamma multiplied by this, so gamma one. This is going to be gamma squared because we have to do one gamma here, one gamma there, and one, and, and so on and so forth. Okay. And um, this, we started from value of zero. And it, it seems like that this is a creeping up of values which all grows up uh, until convergence to the perfect uh, value. Indeed, this is perfectly zero. This is in a sense, the same reason as before, in the sense that we could have thought this as a uh, temporal sequence. Since you always can get uh, closer, you could actually start from the last part and go up in, in uh, let's say, in, in one step, one step, and this is an exact process. So for this particular deterministic uh, transition, actually, uh, starting with value zero, you can get to the perfect exact value. What I want to show, because I think it, it, you, you prove it, but it, it's, it's, um, it's still funny to see, but what happens if I start with a value of 10? So now my starting uh, estimate of the value is much larger than, than what I have, but still I end up in the same, in the same uh, situation. Why it's so? Because this uh, operator is contracting. So if I am in a place which is far away uh, than, than what I, uh, I mean, if I am in any place and I'm doing this, this operation of, of trying the maximum, eventually uh, the, if I am below it, I will gain value because I'm seeing that I actually have a better way to go there and, and, and do uh, essentially, gain a reward in the future. But even if I start above, I will collapse because uh, eventually my value will all uh, collapse to the right way. I, I, it's, it's an obvious thing from the theory, but- Just, uh, just a side is, remark, because you can, you can actually no, notice if you look uh, carefully that for instance, in the upper right corner, all the values here are the same, which is not true. So the, the actual, V star is not like this. Uh, and, and as a result, you see that the policy here is suboptimal because if you follow the bottom lines, for instance, you end up uh, stuck in a, uh, in, a, in, a, in a dead end. Uh, so this is happening because actually you, you haven't converged yet. So you have to run it for, for way longer in order to uh, break all these ties uh, here in the value function and then uh, approach uh, the, the optimal solution. Of course, you, when you start with a value function which is way off uh, the, the optimal one, it takes uh, several more iterations in order to wipe out this uh, initial bias that you put. Uh, on the contrary, 
if you have a good guess about the initial value uh, distribution, uh, then this allows you to converge very quickly. So if uh, an exercise that you can try is that, uh, since you know that the target is in the lower right corner, uh, suppose you start uh, with, a, uh, with an initialization, which is basically uh, uh, gamma to the power of the distance from that corner, ignoring the blocks, okay? The Manhattan distance uh, over the grid. And you can see that if you choose that particular initialization for the value function, you converge quite rapidly to the optimal solution, okay? So the choice of the initialization, of course, is where you can put all all sort of intuition or side information about the structure of your problem. That was that was all I had to comment. Okay. Um, so the next thing. So from now on, the basic algorithm is there. We are just experimenting with a few things which you've seen from the theory part, and it, I think it rather fun to see visually what is the effect. So first of all, we will try multiple goals. So say, okay, so now, now we have one goal with value one. What happens with multiple goals? First thing, a question for you is, um, what happens if you have a goal with a negative reward, but the actions are deterministic? Uh, if you so, sorry, you mean action are deterministic in the sense that there is, this probability is, all, is always one, but yes, action are deterministic in the sense that when you do an action, there is only one uh, one outcome. So if you okay. do an action, you try to go there. Either you can or you can't. But so uh, in this case, how do you how do you treat the 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 blocks and the border? No, no, no. I mean. This is a deterministic action. So if you try to move, either you move, or if it's in a block, you stay still. If you try to go out, you stay still. But this is deterministic. So there is probability one of doing- Ah, okay, okay. It's not, it's not random that probability. Exactly, exactly. Okay, okay. So- I, I, I would make a guess, I'm yes. not sure, but I would say that uh, uh, grid uh, uh, positions with negative reward will uh, work as a repulsor. I, instead of attractors, because the negative uh, reward will propagate, say, to nearby. Okay. Good, hmm? good, uh, good. But now there is a, a problem. So, in a sense, yes. But now we can ask, what is the what is the, the size of this repulsor? So, if the action are deterministic, actually, the size of repulsor is just the single cell. In the sense that if you if the action are, are, are deterministic, you can go as close as you want to, to a negative reward and you will not end on it. So essentially you will learn how to avoid it, but it will act as a block, not as a re true repulsor because essentially it, you can always move around a negative reward be, uh, without going into it. So it will just be a block. Uh, so in a sense, a goal with negative reward does not have much up, uh, impact on uh, if uh, actually deterministic. But we will see another case. I, may I add just one, one comment? Because there it's it's actually a little bit more subtle than that. Uh, because suppose that you have a negative reward which is in the way of one corridor. So you have to go through that corridor in order to reach the, the goal. And uh, uh, so you have two options. Either you step on the negative reward, but since this leads you by the shortest path, it was worth doing it because what you gain by avoiding the long uh, detour to get the, because it, it costs you in terms of gamma to go along the long detour unless you have gamma equals one here. No, I, I have the terminal states. So gamma is equal to one here. Uh... I mean, if you have gamma different from one, this means that you have to reach the target as fast as possible. So this means that you might want to step on the negative reward because it leads you to a shorter, shorter. No, but the, 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 the negative rewards are, are, uh, are um, absorbing state. In, I mean, the goal. Okay. Reward... Okay. So also negative rewards are absorbing. Okay. Yeah. In that case, of course, it doesn't it doesn't apply what I said what I just said. So there are all all sorts of different situations that may arise depending on the specifics of the setting that you choose. In this case. I think I asked you already this question. You already answered me. I forgot. Uh, so in this case, there's no there's no ambiguity. Yeah. 
Thank you. Because as we discussed before, this is one one kind of grid word. Then of course you can you can uh, if you have a proper system you can create your grid word. So uh, for example, we were referring to a system in which you 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 get a reward that going in a, in a goal, but then you can move forward. So if you are in a in a good goal, you will just going back uh, forth outside the inside. And if it's a negative reward, you may choose to pass over it, pay the penalty, and go on. Okay. Uh, but so, this is not the case. Now we have terminal yeah. state. If you just, end up, just, yeah. Yeah, just one thing about the, the fact that you said so basically in this case, we won't have that negative rewards will act as repulsors because there is no way that we can accidentally step on them. Basically. Exactly. Exactly. But, but this is true is, is I mean, this will act as a repulsor as soon as we have actions that uh, are uh, not deterministic, but in the sense that we may want to go one way, but end up going another way, not like we want to go one way and uh, the probability is either we do the step or we stay where we are. Exactly. So when the probabilistic setting is uh, you want to go one way, but you end up another way. And in the case, you, it, you may happen to step on the negative reward and since it's terminal, you avoid it like uh, like that. Exactly. And this this okay. is something which we will we will see uh, perhaps uh, or or you can see it afterwards. Uh, we will we will create exactly this kind of of, of transition which have uh, randomicity in it, randomness in it, and, and then you can create exactly this kind of repulsor you 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 um, you're talking about. So let's take uh, now for now a simple one. We have uh, multiple goals, but both are positive. We still are in uh, in a deterministic uh, action. So either you do the move you want or you stay still. Uh, you can see now that you have uh, a goal with one, which is absorbing, which if you end up, you've done for the day, or a goal which is 10, if you end up, you're done for the day. OK, what happens now? Uh, Let's take gamma 0 0.9, for example. Uh, okay, let's take a larger gamma. Let's take a 95. You will see why. Uh, okay, and now you can see that even if I have two, two goals, okay, uh, the, the position which are stuck have valued zero because it's you can never whatever you do you will never get the reward so if they value zero and the policy is random which okay but now you can have you can see that all other position will actually avoid going to the reward the goal of one because it's absorbing so if you get go there you get one but this is everything you will get for the rest of your life and and they will try to go to the goal with 10. okay now we can have a very simple question, which is, you can see now here, this is value 3.24 and the policies go above, go up, and eventually it will, will lead to the goal 10. The question is, what is the gamma for which this policy will switch from going up into going right? This is actually in this particular case, which is very simple, a calculation which we can do. And the answer is just that we have to take the length of the path from here to the goal and, and see that, that gamma multiplied by, uh, by the, that power uh, will uh, must be um, gamma multiplied, gamma to the power multiplied by 10 must be less than one, okay? So we can check, so the value here is 10. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, oh, we can do it here. This is 10, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, so I forgot, 16, 15, uh, I completely forgot. I think it's like 22, but you will, I, I don't want to, uh, okay. So gamma to 22 equal 10, if somebody okay somebody does the proper math please <laughs> and, and you see what i mean if uh, if the gamma is such that it uh, one is better than gamma to the 23 multiplied by 10 this arrow here will switch from up to right so whenever somebody is, is ready and gives me this number we will we will check scroll down a little bit so we can see better the map okay. i apologize Let's 
think I'm not the most stupid person in the world. I think it's 23. 23. So, Saint Odell. Uh, nobody wants to help me, right? Because I yeah, I, I think it's twenty three. I think yeah. Uh, okay, so yeah, but nobody gives including including the block that we want to 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 go there to change. So. Over. Okay, so I should be. Let's see if I am not. Uh, okay, so let's take this 0 0.946. Okay, let's take this. Okay, no. So it was not 23, it was perhaps 22. Yeah. I apologize, but I had the number, but then the word was changed. Okay. So it, it actually 22 steps, and you see that in, if you change the, the gamma exactly to this value, which is one tenth square, 22 square. You, you can get exactly the, the gamma such that it does not, uh, it's not convenient to go up and go in 22 steps and end up in value 10, but it's, it's, it's more valuable to just step into value one. Okay, it was a very silly exercise, but I just wanted to show. Uh, so of course, if you are much below, what you get, is that now the, the, the absorbing thing of, of the, the small value is much larger, okay? Because you are effectively reducing the, the, the time horizon in which they, they are expecting to live. Uh, essentially, and they say, okay, now it's better to have uh, an egg today than a chicken uh, tomorrow. So it can be proven by numerical simulations. Okay, let's add stochastic mo moves and then we are done. Uh, it's very simple. I'm using one of the possible way of creating stochastic move. And it's, it's something which you will see a lot of time. So uh, I give a probability and this probability uh, gives that e with that probability, you are actually doing the action you want to do. And with one minus that probability, you're doing any, uh, any action, okay? Uh, this will have some 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 equivalence with uh, something called the epsilon greedy. We, it, it's a standard things. Okay, you either do with some probability of doing something, or with one minus that probability you do anything at all. Okay. Uh, now you you can see that now it does basically the same, but it returns two lists, and the list now have a lot of states and a lot of probability of ending up in that state. And you can see that actually, this is now this this uh, summation here. Uh, so for for any action, you can actually end up in many position, different position, having different rewards. It's even closer than this expression here. So if you do an action, you can have a list of possible outcome, all with their processing probability. And what you have to do is sum up of all the possible outcome, all the possible probability of uh, ending up in that outcome with that reward with the value of in the new position. Okay, this is very, very, very simple stuff. Um, let's just take it. Okay, now, does it change anything? Now we are going to do something which is, uh, okay, we are doing, a new kind of world, which I have a, a, a weak attractor here, plus one reward, a strong attractor here, plus 10 reward, and a, and a negative uh, minus 10 uh, uh, terminal state here, okay? 
And then I can change the probability of randomness. So this is the probability or I'm actually doing what I want to do. So if it's, this is one, it's exactly as, uh, oops, exactly as before. So what it, what it, uh, oh, sorry, it, it, it was, you see, it, it just moves around as it was a, a block. It does, doesn't care at all that it's here. But then I change the probability to something which is, uh, is rather significant. So I have only 80% of the probability of doing what, uh, what I'm supposed to do. And you will see when we finish cal calculating. Okay, that now, for example, if you are here, it's better to move right instead of down because you, you are, you're actually going out, uh, farther away from the uh, repulsion goal. And you can see that uh, if you are here, you will not take the shortest path going down, but you will prefer to go in up. So it, it already changes a lot what you want to do. And you see that the value, so the color is, is, uh, is uh, it's actually uh, lower close to the repulsor in, instead of um, farther away. What it's even nicer if you if you want to do something which is even crazy, it's basically a random walk with a small decision. Uh, so the, the agent can decide, but it's just a very small probability of doing what it has decided. You see that most of the space actually uh, the best optimal policy is to try to go to the to the weak attractor with only one reward because at least it does not. Uh, risk to to end up in the minus ten reward. Okay, so in a sense we have seen visually that, and now we have done that. Uh, we, even if the basic algorithm is very simple, then you can play around with, and and the implementation of the details of the word can change a lot. So gamma can uh, can switch the best policy to go somewhere instead of something else. And, and if you have uh, also randomicity, you can have some policy which can get discarded because they were, they are sub, uh, like uh, they they could end up in some danger. Uh, sorry for taking so long. Uh, I hope uh, you don't have too many questions, but <laughs> in, in the sense that then I would have loved to answer more. So. Do you have a question? Sorry. Yes, I have one. Yes. I didn't understand well why um, if we put uh, the discounted reward to the power of the length of the path uh, uh, to the um, bigger accumulator, then uh, we end up with a policy that is go to the um, uh, weaker accumulator. OK, perfect. Uh, thank you. So. Um, uh, we we have the, the we have essentially uh, let's go here okay so we have the the value it's a it's it's uh, it's given by the reward plus gamma the value in the next state okay so we can trace out what is the value going away from one uh, attractor. The value going away from this attractor here, for example, now it's one because it has the reward with R plus gamma value. The reward is one if it ends up down. So the, uh, its value is actually one because it's one plus zero. Okay. Then if we go to the convergence, the, to be in this state here, you have gamma, which was 0 0.95, multiplied by one, which was the reward. Okay. So you have zero reward plus gamma the value here. If you are one step away, you have zero reward plus gamma the value, but the value was zero reward plus gamma the value. Okay. So whenever you, you step one farther away, you get that your value, if you decide to go there, it's gamma multiplied by gamma, multiplied by gamma, multiplied by gamma, et cetera, et cetera, ending up in the value of the uh, of the of the attractor, okay, of the the goal state. You see what I mean? Okay. Yes. So basically, we forgot uh, um, that there is an accumulator because we are um, the length uh, far away. Uh, so the gamma is too small to remember that uh, 
that uh, steps far away, there is a bigger reward. Uh, I would not call it to forget. The point is that when you're doing this action here, you're, you're doing the uh, action which maximize this, this term here. In a sense, which it, 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 it's a bit, uh, I, I, it, it, I hope it's, it's clear, it's not 100% accurate, but in a sense, you are evaluating two different paths, okay? I'm do, I can do two actions. One action is I'm doing just one step and get reward one, and this term does not exist. The other step, the other action will get, uh, will go on and will get a reward of, will get, a, the, if you sum everything else, it's like gamma plus gamma plus gamma plus gamma plus gamma, okay? So you have two actions and you're taking the maximum, but one action is always one. The other action is, it depends on gamma. But it's not like you're forgetting. It's like you have to always to maximize uh, these two terms. One is one and one depends on gamma. So at a certain point, if the gamma is small enough, this accumulation of gamma multiplied by gamma multiplied by gamma, even if the reward, the ending reward is 10, will get smaller than one. And I chose this uh, gamma, which is uh, one tenth of, uh, to the square of one over 22, which is exactly the value for which the two terms are equal. So if you do action right, then you have one. If you do action up, you have gamma, 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 10, which is essentially the same number if this gamma is chosen as, as, uh, as before. If I take a smaller gamma, then I have the maximum of two action, but this action actually, one is larger than all the rest. For any gamma larger than this value, this value here is, 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 is the best one. So it's not forgetting, it's that you are calculating both terms exactly, but at a certain point, one switches to being larger than the other. Okay, I got this, thank you very much. Okay, if anything, anybody else has a, has a question? Okay, so if there are no further questions, uh, I, I just have one final remark. Uh, so we have not been doing any uh, algorithm in, uh, in policy space, like policy search algorithms that I described uh, yesterday, like uh, uh, policy iteration or uh, policy gradients. Uh, uh, but this could be a good uh, uh, suggestion for uh, exercises and final projects uh, to apply something from this, uh, uh, the same environments that I've described here for grid world to apply policy, uh, policy iteration, for instance, that would be a, uh, a possible uh, exercise or whatever else comes to, to your mind. Okay, so with that, uh, uh, I think we're done for the week uh, and uh, Next to Wednesday, uh, we'll start discussing uh, uh, problems with partial observability. So function approximation and partial observable mark of decision processes. And next uh, Friday, there will be a, again a tutorial on those new subjects. Okay. Thank you, Emanuele. Okay, bye. thank you, goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. bye.